Today on The Daily Charge, Facebook launches a new dating service, Amazon's 20 new Fire TV gadgets, and our big Apple iPhone 11 preview. Good morning and welcome to CNET's Daily Charge. It's Thursday, September 5th. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. And I'm David Katzmeyer. Let's get to today's stories. Apple's next big event is scheduled for next Tuesday, so we figure it's never too early to preview what we expect from the iPhone 11. The biggest change may be to its highest end model, rumored to be called the iPhone 11 Pro, so say goodbye to the Max. Supposedly it has a glass back and a triple camera configuration, while the more budget-friendly iPhone 11R may finally get that dual lens setup that, well, you know, the budget seekers have been wanting for. So, are you guys excited? Is that it? This is this is it. Dual lenses. Yay! Why well, isn't it, isn't the big thing like going to be next year's iPhone? Yeah. Right? So I mean, this how is many the, times have we said that though? Every well, year, right? Yeah. Every year. This is not an S year technically. So. so this is the third year that they're basically using the same design, and they've been doing this recently. They've kind of extended out the cycle, so now you have to wait three years for a big refresh. And I think you're right in terms of adding 5G. In terms of like a big redesign, we're probably have to going to wait for the 2020 model. Right, right. And they said this morning that the fingerprint reader might come next year too. The in-screen fingerprint yep. reader that everybody else already has. So yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, it's a little little disappointing if you're a if you're an Apple user. I and we've commented about this plenty of times, but Samsung already introduced both of those features: 5G and in-screen fingerprint yep. reader. What was it in March mm-hmm. with the Galaxy S10? S10. Yeah, yeah. So it's pretty clear from reading Shara Tipkin's story today. It's pretty clear that Apple has been well behind on the innovation curve. This is a continuation of that. That being said, from a business perspective, they're like, okay, we smartphone market is saturated at this point. Yeah. We're going to build out on services, a lot of other things. So, Absolutely, and, and that's what they've been doing for years. And keep yeah. in mind, they deal with huge volumes for this single phone, right? So every time they have to make a big a tweak or change to his phone it's it's a massive process right so that's partly their greatest strength is its greatest weakness yeah yeah next up facebook is launching a dating service in the u.s yes you heard that right the company which faces a host of questions about its ability to protect our data wants you to trust it with finding you with that finding you that special someone ben what do you think is this why? Why is this happening? This is this is like Facebook Portal all over again, <laughs> which is like the company is going through all of these security and privacy issues, yep. and now um, coming out with a new product that a lot of people are really questioning what the value is, or are people going to trust Facebook with this type of data? Yeah, our own Queenie Wong talked to Facebook about this and really, uh, really asked about the privacy question. You know, they they assured her that. You know, the information collected for the dating profile wouldn't be sold to advertisers. And they, they're trying to take extra steps to make this secure and kind of walled off. Keep in mind, beyond Facebook, other dating services have had a pretty bad rap when it comes to privacy concerns. So yeah. there's, there's sort of a there's there's two issues here that yeah. Facebook is dealing with. And, and according to Queenie's story, she also mentioned that a lot of younger people are the folks that tend to use dating apps in mm-hmm. the first place. And so this is an opportunity for Facebook to try to, I don't know, lower the age of their total demographic because everybody's been right. jumping to Instagram. Yeah. So we'll see if that works. And this this apparently sucks in the Instagram posts automatically. So, you know, that makes sense too. So if you're, if you're on Instagram, you're dating. So, yeah. Definitely. And keep in mind, this is not supposed to be Tinder. This is more about finding that, you know, that special someone and not the the single night hookup. So. Yeah. Also, Amazon launched 20 Fire TV equipped gadgets at Berlin's IFA trade show that includes its first OLED TV with Fire TV built in. That's why we have David Katzmeyer on. David, break, us, break it down for us. That is a lot of products. Wait, I'm not here to talk about Facebook dating? No. If you want. Oh, well, sorry. We're done with that. <laughs> um, no, it's all, it's all about this OLED TV that has Fire TV, the first of its kind. It's only in Germany. So, you know, OLED TVs have great picture quality. Fingers crossed that comes to the U.S. You know, maybe LG will, uh, you know, throw in Roku TV or yeah. Amazon Fire TV and get rid of their little WebOS system. Uh, there's also, you know, a new Fire TV Cube, which is the weird remote control hybrid thing that's come to the U.S. It's going to be faster. And, you know, a soundbar with built-in Fire TV. So that's a trend that's happening, too, is they're building these streaming things into soundbars, you know, because why not? And are people actually, I mean, I, I get the streaming stick, but are, are folks actually buying these this other kind of ecosystem of Fire TV connected products? Or Well, yeah, I mean, Amazon says they are. They I mean, the stick is doing really well, but the Fire TV TVs, for example, that's like their big other play and that again competes with Roku those have been selling really well too according to them Prime Day was like a, a big blockbuster obviously yeah. for the Toshiba branded things they have a partnership with Best Buy so they're out there in the market and a lot of people are using them and you know if you like Alexa a lot um, I think it's a pretty good product otherwise I like Roku TV better 
All right. Finally, the Galaxy Fold is back. Samsung touts that it will launch with a new white glove customer support program. But if you're looking to get in the U.S., you're out of luck. It'll only be available in South Korea, Germany, and the U.K. The Fold has been, I mean, it's been kind of a disastrous launch. And, and now it's not even coming to the U.S. I mean, is that, what does that mean for foldable phones? Um, I mean, good for them. I say this every time, but honestly, we were talking about Apple earlier that they really are so incremental in their efforts. Mm -hmm. This is the first time that a, a major company, well, Huawei is doing this too. Which but, has also had a delayed product. So. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a big change. So I think, at least from my perspective, consumers are going to be a little bit more patient, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Yeah, and American consumers are not patient with something that breaks. I feel like <laughs> launching only in, 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 you know, a limited market, especially Korea, where it's like basically playing on your home turf, yep. you know, they really have uh, an advantage in terms of getting the word out there positive. They have a lot of negative, you know, stuff to overcome with this phone. So. So, you know, not launching the U.S. wise, maybe a little, you know, pansy-ish, but, you know, it's Samsung. They can do what they want. <laughs> well, partly it's, I think, a bunch of the carriers kind of backed out, right? There, there were carriers that were committed to selling this thing. They probably saw the controversy and just said, you know what? We don't we don't need the drama. Yeah. And, and they're still coming out with it. So, you know, they, they didn't scuttle it completely. So right. give them credit for that. All right. So now we turn to our live audience to see what stories they want to learn more about and see what details we can better fill in. As always, you can sound off in the YouTube live chat or tweet at us for the remainder of the show and beyond. We will do our best to answer everything that gets thrown at us. BBG, what is on people's minds today? Shouting out to Eric who says, can I roll my eyes now? 11 is just one louder, right? Uh, where are all of the really, really fantastic uh, Spinal Tap jokes that we are in desperate need of right now, guys? Yeah, I'm, I'm coming have up empty. Sorry. Yeah. Is there a Netflix remake of that coming anytime soon? I, I don't know. I, yeah, it's early. <laughs> Sorry, man. Okay, fine. <laughs> let's uh, let's take one from Ryan. He says, "Do you think that Apple's apparent lack of innovation will hurt sales? I think people that love iPhone will make an excuse as to why it took so long for something like a simple in-screen fingerprint reader to come about." Yeah, I mean, look, we've, I think Apple's already feeling the hurt already. Their sales have been in decline. Uh, they've, they've stopped reporting how many units they sell, which is always a red flag. Uh, you know, they, they've been able to keep revenue relatively stable because they keep jacking up the price. And, you know, this, this iPhone 11 Pro, I, I don't really have you know, an idea what it's going to be priced at, but I suspect it'll cost even more than ever. If you remember, the iPhone XS Max was $1,100. This might go even higher. You know, they can justify the fact that this is the only model with three cameras. It's got the nice glass back, uh, you know, which is relatively new. Um, and it's, it's, it's got a few things that you can at least tout as like, here's the new iPhone. I have the latest iPhone I can brag about. But generally at this point, I think Apple kind of relies on the install. It's installed base to say, well, it's time for an upgrade. You know, my phone's three or four years old. I don't want to switch to Android because it's scary going to a new OS. So I'll just buy this new iPhone. Yeah. And it's important to remember that um, they make a ton of money off of the iPhone. I looked yep. this up ahead of the show. Uh, they made $1.109 billion in the first six months in their first two quarters uh, of this past year. So they're still doing incredibly well as far right. as this business. It has been declining and it's expected to decline again with the iPhone 11. But um, they don't really have to innovate nearly as much. And that was kind of your point is that people will buy that product regardless. And it's almost to their benefit not to drastically change it mm -hmm. and offer people something hugely different. Yeah. And look, that's that's why they're they're focusing on services. That's why we, we're expecting them to talk a bit more about things like Apple Arcade and Apple TV Plus. Yeah. And I, I feel like that's really the big money maker for them. You know, yeah. sell an extra subscription or whatever, get on that bandwagon, get people hooked on something a little bit different. Apple Music is a great example mm -hmm. of that, which brings up the question of whether they're going to announce some kind of bundle, which is, I think, what people really want out yeah. there. If you're an Apple guy, give me, you know, iCloud, give me Apple Music, get me the new, you know, TV Plus uh, at a reasonable price and, and throw it all together. And, you know, you have another compelling thing to, uh, you know, to stick in the Apple universe. Yeah. Greg on Twitter says, I cannot wait to see what they come up with. I think for sure there will be a bump in storage to the one terabyte model and some other spec increases. I really hope more carriers support eSIM soon. There's some we don't talk about a lot, eSIM. Yeah, definitely. That's uh, something Apple had introduced a couple of years ago with the iPad mini uh, and the carriers were kind of skish about it. There are more more carriers that are starting to support eSIMs, which is a great thing, like having to not have to physically remove a SIM and mm -hmm. go to a store and get another SIM. Part of it is, you know, carriers 
have been resistant to it because they didn't want folks to kind of freely switch between carriers. But I think a lot of them are seeing the writing on the wall and like eSIMs are basically the future. They, they seem like they're more secure and they're just, it's just a better customer experience overall. Yeah, and it makes it less likely to have to spend a lot of money on the stores and everything. Yep. I mean, yeah, there, there's the idea of going to the store to buy something, but I think more and more people are moving away from that brick and mortar experience and making it easier for people to not have to go. Yep. Storm King asks, any ideas what pro features Apple might introduce? Uh, I Just mean, the camera. the camera, I think, is it. I'm sure yeah. there'll be some software bits or maybe some app, new applications or something that emphasizes the ability to create content as opposed to consume it. But I don't, I don't know. It's, if you remember from last year, they emphasized the camera for most yeah. of, of the presentation. Yeah. yeah. And all these it, tricks you can do. You know, yeah. Like, they always they, it's always like a big to do. Like yeah. the presentation is always like makes it seem like it's so um you know, like it's it's like a big event, but ultimately, what was the big presentation from last year? Granted, that was an S year, but yeah. I, I don't. It, unless there's a huge design change, yeah, the, people aren't going to get terribly excited about this. Well, when you talk about Apple mini, missing out on innovations, I mean, three lenses on the camera. That's you know, it's it's pretty big. And at the end of the day, Apple does have the reputation, pretty well warranted, for having the best camera out there, if not one of the best cameras. Mm. So, and and people generally, you know, that's the thing that people care about on their phones. Really, yeah. I mean, is the camera performance. So I think it makes a lot of sense for them to continue focusing on that. And maybe they'll throw something really cool out there. I mean, they they're pretty good at that. You know, with software or some new camera feature, that might be the most exciting part of the presentation. Yeah, I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if there'd be some if there isn't some sort of long demo where you know you could shoot video like shoot high quality video edit it on the fly and basically have this kind of polished produced you know we've already got filmmakers shooting movies mm. on iPhones and that this is sort of the next logical step of them promoting that idea. I've seen that they do that on the demos but I don't think regular users ever use those features. I agree. Those are yeah. those are really nice to present on a staged event where they're saying like hey look at this awesome skateboarding video that I shot. How many of your users are actually using that kind of thing? True, but it's the same case when you know Samsung or LG. These guys are all posting these like insane demos and the with like highly slickly produced videos that come out of their phones. I don't think most people are using any of these features. Hmm. I mean, what you really want is something to screw up your crappy camera work. You know, it, or, sorry to make your to crappy, camera, your crappy camera, camera work. Right. Well, <laughs> it'll do that too. Um, but yeah, to make your make you not such a bad photographer. And, and most right. people, you know, still have this issue of you know, I went on vacation and I have like one good picture out of the whole thing. And if Apple can somehow nail some sort of improvement feature or you know, make it look more Instagram ready, whatever it is, boost, boost the colors. You know, get rid of bad focus. Make you know, night shots, which is a continual issue with cameras, look mm -hmm. better. Better, then you know that's that's kind of a win. There Remember when Apple used to make phones and not what? just cameras? I feel attacked. I want actual phone feature improvements, better call. I agree. Wait, 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 wait. I agree. Battery you, life, better signal. No, uh, you don't use a phone, Brian. Don't don't kid. You you actually get on the phone with someone on with your phone? No, nah, he's right. I'm yeah, totally there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Storm King, let's talk to Storm King. Any uh, uh, I've uh, any any uh, warrant on the rumors that iPhones will have pen support? Oh, Oof. or pencil, pencil, like pencil, pencil. Uh, like a stylus. I'd be Sorry, maybe the iPhone 11 Pro might get a stylus support. Um, that would be fitting, considering it's it kind of lines up with the iPad Pro branding and and its own pencil support. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was another differentiating factor for the uh, the 11 Pro. Timothy says, is it possible for Samsung or Apple to bring back the headphones, uh, headphone port, as a quote-unquote retro or limited edition down the road, like five years? <laughs> that's that's, not, awesome. a, that's not a silly question. Time. A really small iPhone with a headphone port? I mean, I feel like that would sell pretty well. You Wait, could wasn't put it that the SE? Well, they killed it, so yeah, and everybody was it. sad. You so. could put it in the budget version, you know, like that R version of the phone. The like R? keep the yeah, bring it, bring it back. But then for that, that would mess one. with the the yeah. super thin design that they're always obsessed with. Whatever thin design, you know, like that's just so utterly pointless. Well, at it would this also point. you know devalue the AirPods, and that's really what. They, yeah, that is like that's, what's them. That's <laughs> what the they're whole making all their money exactly. on. <laughs> so you know, and people buying new AirPods every year because they lose them. So right. you know, the 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 real thing is that they don't want to have any wired headphones period and yeah they, I feel they, like that's they never want to happen exactly they want to get away from anything wired and like basically the message to consumers is like just get over it at this point right like, it's not coming samsung back. just gave up the, yeah. the headphone jack for the note 10 Oof. so 
And they were sort of the last, you know, holdout. So for for like as far as the big manufacturers, yeah, in terms yeah. of the big manufacturers. And, so and like, Google, Google was another one with the Pixel. But they dropped two it last years year. ago. They dropped it last year. Yeah, was it gone. two years ago that it was actually part of their marketing? Yeah, like when they yeah, actually yeah. did their demo, they were like, "We kept the headphone jack," right. which like that was. I um, mean, Samsung made a big deal of it every year at every presentation until this year, where they didn't even acknowledge it. Mm-hmm. They didn't even mention that they were losing the headphone jack. It just it just was like, okay. Yeah, and on. now they have Galaxy Buds, and now right. you know they're they're getting on the bandwagon too. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, there are some. I I still I use a Nintendo Switch like almost every day. Yeah. That thing doesn't have Bluetooth on it, so I'm still yes. walking around with you know wired headphones, which is great. You know, I'm fine with it. I can plug them in, and it works great. I don't have to worry about losing them easily. So you know, that's one of the few products that hasn't gone this route. Although that's the thing, like it's almost the reverse now, like where I kind of wish the Switch had Bluetooth so I didn't have to deal with exactly. having a wired headphone with me all the time. It's a thing. Mm-hmm. Listen, listen, you guys, no, no one is as brave as Apple. They took the holes out of the phone, they took the ports out of the phone and courage. punched them into the screen. No one has courage like Apple it's all about to courage. move the holes into your yeah. visibility range. I hate to admit it that they were ahead of the curve on this one. I mean, like, we complain about their That's innovation. Their innovation, or whatever. Is their innovation removing was removing features. Remo- which, granted, they, they are the kings of removing ports. They like, are. I have a, they I have are. a MacBook Absolutely. Air. I have oh, a yeah. new MacBook Air at home, and that thing has such a dearth of ports that anytime I need to do anything, well, I have to go dig one, around two, for right? a dongle. Dongle yeah. two USB C's. Right. Well, they also have a headphone jack inexplicably. Yeah, yeah. They're like, yeah, 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 we'll give you the headphone jack when you buy a MacBook Air. <laughs> so but they did notice this whole situation before everybody else did. And there are a lot more uh AirPod type products out there. There are a lot more wireless headphones out there than there than there were two or three years ago. Oh, yeah, so, that yeah. And, and, and Bluetooth has gotten a lot better too. Yeah. So yeah. if you want to buy cheaper ones, I think Rick Breida found some from who Yeah, was they're it? like eighty bucks. Anchor has some that are really cheap. Yeah. You know? There are yeah, cheaper yeah, yeah, yeah. ones that you don't have to spend a, like hundred and fifty dollars on. Yeah. No, that's too bad because I just did on a pair of sound sports. Nice. We're calling it right now the iPhone Retro Summer twenty twenty. Love Keep it. Your eye sure. in the stores. Michael Brown has a theory. If we as consumers didn't look into the leaks and rumors, would we be as surprised when these keynotes and releases come about? Then we wouldn't have a show, Michael. Yeah. yeah. What are we going to do with ourselves? Yeah. What, what, everybody's, what we talk about? everybody's so interested in Apple, though, that like okay. there, there are just so many leaks and rumors. Like We're anticipating another Amazon event. Um, in September or October, we're anticipating another Google event. Yep. There were some Google leaks, but Google as far as the stuff Amazon stuff, actually. like what yeah. do we like? And, and, and maybe another, this is, a second Apple event after this event, right? You know, where, right. You know, who, who knows what they're going to come out with? But that, like so. the rumor mill industry is like so powerful for Apple specifically, whereas it really isn't as much for other companies. I take the blame for that a bit. Because maybe I should know more about yeah, we what have a- some more Amazon, Amazon Ruby yeah. roundups. Come on, yeah, yeah other than the robot, like Seriously. they're going to come, come on, out man. with like an Alexa robot that's going to like walk around and cook you dinner. When that's... is Alexa going to have a fingerprint reader, Ben? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> <I> really <laughs> need speaker one. Speaker fingerprint reader. There you it's go. not going to answer. It's not going to answer your questions unless you like push <laughs> your on finger. It. Well, if it's dirty. a really personal question, maybe they're like, that's sorry, right. that's we right. can't answer that question until you. Right, right. You got to. You, Second verification. Or unlock your password. You know, there's yeah, got to be some use go. for it. All know? right. You know what? It's a terrible idea. Fingerprint sensor <laughs> on not? Echo Dot. Come if, on. If, if anything. Stop hey, trying if, to hey, convince me of this. If you're purchasing get... like, a, a, like a refrigerator with your Alexa, I, I kind of want the fingerprint verification. Like, well, I want the fingerprint reader on my fridge so the kids can't just go Ooh, in there and eat like all the that. ice cream they want. You know, mm. that's, yes. That's a good time. An ice cream fingerprint lock. Or for yourself. Just be like, you know what? I can't go in here after 10 p.m. Put the fingerprint reader on there. Yeah. I, I like it. <laughs> More bad fingerprint bad readers everywhere. Yes. Right. Yes. Tim asks, do they think they will bring back the FM radio on the iPhone? Uh, I need <laughs> this feature when watching a drive-in movie or anything related to an incident or PSA from local broadcast. They still have drive-in movie theaters? That's a dead serious question. I grew up with one. I thought they were all gone. And oh, yeah. No, they're, they're still around. Oh, yeah. They're a they big are. thing. They are. So yeah. We, we, we saw one upstate when we were driving up there. The problem was, it, at, at, you know, in the middle of summer, the movie doesn't start till 9. Yeah. So, you know, it didn't really work out. It doesn't but, work for kids, yeah. for sure. Uh, there was one in Southern California. Yeah. I think they've, like, re, reopened one. But it only played old movies. Probably but an FM radio? <laughs> yeah, FM radio is kind of sort of a lost cause. I, I mean, that was a thing. Nice, I was asking you about a lot for like old school yeah, technology. Yeah, I mean, that was a cool feature, like having it kind of like synced up where if you plugged in your headphone, it would pick up the, mm. the FM band. But oh, it's great for offline. You know, yeah. if you're in a place where, you know, you don't have any service, then yeah, it's great to be able to pick up the radio. But yeah, otherwise. Yeah. 
Just listen to podcasts. Sorry. I don't know, man. Yeah, just download this podcast and just listen it over and over again. Right. There you right? go. There you go. SK asks, will the new MacBook Pro 16-inch be the one more thing moment this time around? Ooh, that's a good question. I, I, I feel like it's unlikely. There is, uh, David alluded to, an uh, event that we're expecting in October where most likely an iPad Pro show up, but I think that's if they're going to show off a MacBook Pro, like a 16-inch, a new redesigned MacBook Pro, that's probably where you're going to see it. Yeah, and one more one more thing is usually, I don't know, U2 or something like that. You're not going to get necessarily a, a really cool new piece of hardware that you want. We'll see. You yeah. know? Maybe it'll be some VR glasses. Who knows? They've been developing it for a while. That would really be something. <laughs> That's a one more that would thing. Be, that yeah. would be a huge one more thing. There you go. We are not expecting that, by the way. Yeah, yeah. No, We're no, no. Don't, don't, there's, there's rumors out there. That's not one of them. Yeah. We got Ayas in the chat. Uh, watching our backs, uh, there's a correction. The Fold is coming to the U.S. eventually. There's no date announced, just that the initial launch is on September 6th in South Korea for that 5G oh. model. We we stand by our original reporting. Eventually? Eventually. Eventually, right. sure. I mean, we figured it yeah. would come eventually. I mean, for one, I could say I think the carriers have all kind of backed off of, of selling that thing, so it might come uh, unlocked or directly through Samsung, but... Yeah, it's just look. The, the the fact is, it's the launch markets are Korea, UK, and Germany, and that's that kind of shows like the limited scope of like how they're launching this thing. If you really want it, you can just go to Samsung in in uh, Korea, pick one up, fly sure. back. You know, sure. if you're a fold guy, do it. Yeah, quick I mean, if you can trip. afford a fold, you can afford a quick trip to South Korea. Absolutely, for sure. Or the, actually, the UK. The UK is like a few hours Easy. away. Easy. A couple Even hundred easier. bucks. Yeah. yeah. Bring one, it of back. The, one of those markets is getting the 5G version, right? UK and Germany will get the 5G, 5, 5G version. So the yes. reason I mentioned that, Samsung has a foldable phone with 5G built in. We're talking about an extra camera on the back of the iPhone. Yeah. Come on. That's true. That's true. That's the... Uh, Big difference there. It's an extra camera, man. Okay, you're yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, keep in mind, <laughs> Apple doesn't do these experiments, right? When they when they make a phone, it, it is a mass market phone. They expect to sell hundreds of millions of units. Like this fold, they're they're expecting to sell how many, right? Like ten thousand, fifty thousand units. Like that's that's not a game that Apple plays. And I think that's again going back to its strengths and weaknesses. That's like they're going to have a very polished product. It's just not going to be super innovative because they've got to appeal to the masses, right? And they have developed more models over the years but yeah. it's still what is it four it's really just, really not that and many. it's really just variations and like older models that they've kind of held mm -hmm. up right yeah so. and like i got the bigger one and the smaller one yeah, and that's basically yeah, yeah. It. Oh, that's so, a good that's point fair. i think it would be cool to see apple do some sort of more innovative thing with its phone line you know th th this relentless focus on always succeeding always having you know these three phones or whatever that are going to be the super mainstream appealing models you know, a company that has that much money, you'd think they'd be able to take a risk or two and 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 go off and, and maybe release a phone or, you know, that, that wasn't, uh, you know, that appealing to everybody, but, you know, folds in some of these cool features. Right? Yeah, no, I would, I mean, I'd like, I like to see that. I like that idea. I mean, arguably that was what the iPhone 10 was when they, they launched. Remember, there was the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus and like, okay, we've got this experimental phone. With which, the face ID? Yeah, that, that ended up being the phone that everyone wanted anyway, but right. that I think that was Apple's way of doing it which still was considered a pretty mass market. Pretty product. tame. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. flip it on its head. When was the last time you heard about an Apple product that didn't do that well that they actually came out with? You know, like, for example, I guess the HomePod is probably a, the, the best. And they, get, they continue to push that one. Right. I, I think the SE, they probably decided wasn't selling as much as they wanted it to. And so they eventually killed it off. I mean, yeah. it could also be that that phone may not have been as profitable as they would have liked. Yeah. Apple I likes its margins. So. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, aren't rumors flying that they're thinking about bringing the SE back in a completely rehashed, rebooted, ground-up kind of way? Uh, I mean, I think that's that's part rumor, part wishful thinking, I think, for a lot of folks. I, I, I don't believe it'll a come back. A cheap iPhone? That would be great. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that would be amazing. I just I don't know Perfect if it's actually going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Well, the cheap iPhone is three years ago's iPhone. So. Right. There you go. Really fantastic commentary and questions flying through today. That's like the best part of the show is that it's like a team effort. Uh, the more everybody in the audience contributes here on YouTube and Twitter and everywhere else, the less we have to pay uh, these guys here. So yep. uh, that's how it works, actually. <laughs> All right. So be quiet, everybody. We're sending yeah. you your Don't check. Don't say word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Storm King wants to see the return of Touch ID, not so invested in Face Unlock. I don't like Face Unlock. I didn't love Touch ID myself that much, but I take it over Face Unlock. Commander Trium, potentially I think thumbprint readers could be more secure. Is there any hard data or truth to that? I wish we had Alfred here to say yeah, something. Yeah, we don't. 
We don't. Sorry. I, I would just say from a consumer perspective, I also prefer a touch ID or Ditto. like a fingerprint reader yeah, to yeah. face ID, but um, I don't have a phone and I never I did would actually that have like face, face ID. I ID better if it worked both vertically and horizontally. Because I know it's like when I have it. Is like, that so? Because it, it doesn't, right? It only You have to hold it up like this, but if you're like watching a video and it locks, and you want to unlock it, you got to like do this again, which is I mean, kind of you could just... Touch ID, I can unlock my phone like as soon as I put my, like my hand in my pocket. Like while you're pulling it out of the it pocket. It was that effective, right? <laughs> so, I don't see. I mean, I, you know, Samsung introduced, introduced it this year. It didn't work that well. That was kind of the issue, right? And so... Uh, it was a little wonky. I know a bunch of other Android handset makers have used uh, a different kind of technology for their in-screen fingerprint reader. That did work pretty well. Like the OnePlus one, uh, in-screen I've seen fingerprint that. reader. It works super pretty fast. well. It's yeah. not mm-hmm. quite as secure, but it's super fast. Um, and so there are ways to do it effectively, and hopefully Apple gets around to it mm. at some point. I mean, Eventually. Roger, you could just unlock your phone like this. That's right. I do that. I actually do that. I'm that lazy. Sometimes when it's like on a stand and I'm watching it, I don't. I'm too lazy or I'm like, so you contort your entire body. That makes sense. I told man. <laughs> yeah, it works. Christopher Mann, can you see any new Apple TV announces at this event? Any updates to either the service or some new hardware? Ooh, David? Mm, uh, sorry, it's a big negatory. I would love to see it too. Uh, we were talking about this earlier with Scott Stein, who's going to be at the event. Um, I told him I feel like it's going to be maybe a price drop on the non-4K version. Get that thing down to 100 bucks. Right now it's 150 That would be pretty cool, but a very unApple like move, especially yeah. that big of a, of a drop. Uh, as for new hardware, I don't think it's going to happen. We saw the Apple TV 4K a couple of years ago. I still think that's going to be their box. But yeah, services, obviously. That's what they're going to yeah. do is start selling more things that work with this uh, box, including Apple Arcade and the Apple TV Plus streaming service. Yeah, we saw like a sizzle reel of uh, different shows that would be on TV. TV Plus, hopefully we'll get a little bit more of a firm idea of like the kind of content. Did they announce pricing yet? No, they're no, not. That, and and okay. I think that's probably going to happen at yeah. this event. Or oh, well, maybe it'll happen in October, but you know, you got to No, to, I think to your really point, quick. I think hopefully if they start talking about bundles, that's where things get really interesting, right? Like if you bundle in iCloud, music, TV, yeah. you know, arcade news, the news service, which no one talks about anymore, even though that's been around for it's it's been a, a thing months. for a couple of months now. Well, yeah. let me let me bring back another one. So, at, you know, at WWC, they talked about the um, when, or the big services event. They talked about the new Apple TV app, right? That thing coming to Samsung TVs and and opening yep. up to a lot of different smart TV manufacturers. They also mentioned Roku and Amazon Fire TV in that presentation. Since then, it's been crickets. Apple TV's actual content, iTunes, including this Apple TV Plus app, arriving on a Roku or an Amazon Fire TV at like a $30, $40 price point, Mm. there's your kind of like poor man's Apple TV in that you get all their software and services, maybe even Apple Music on those devices. And, you know, it makes sense for them if they want to spread Apple TV Plus around to as many devices as they can to get on those, you know, really big streaming You have to. You have to. I mean, like, just from the sizzle reels, they're obviously spending a lot of money getting talent and producing these shows. If you're not going to put them on other platforms, you're only going to put them on Apple TV or a handful of other things that they have significant control over. I don't see how that's going to work from a business perspective, but I don't know. I, I also, why will. would you want to watch those things on um, an iPhone? You want to watch them on a bigger screen too. They we'll look buy an pretty Apple nice. TV. Yep, I guess. There you go. Right, exactly. There you go. Just make me spend more money, of course. I mean, I, I usually Apple, tend to watch my content on or my videos like in a corner with my iPhone. Really? Yeah, just tucked away so like the kid doesn't hear and wake up. Like I'm, I'm constantly just paranoid about that. Mm. Uh, yeah. My big TV is is basically reserved for my kid. Huh? Yeah, during daytime watching hours. It's, it's tough. sad. It's super sad. Eh, it's, it's the same in my house. You'll get it back, Roger. When they get a little bit older. A couple of years. Back. Yeah, you'll yeah, get yeah, it back. When, it's I mean, nice. The clock resets with my second kid. So, there you go. Oof. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. So I got. Then we'll just get the kid years. a new Mazel TV. <laughs> and the kid will still have the better TV. Uh, we got a few minutes left. Actually, we're almost, we're really running low on time. Let's try to fly through a couple ones here that are just coming in late. Uh, Alan asks, any word on the new Apple tile? I'm not sure what oh, he's referring good. to. Uh, yeah, that's that could be one more thing. The, the, the rumors of like a, a tile competitor that Apple's been, that's been out for a while. We thought maybe it might show up at WWDC. Uh, it might show up at this event. It could show up in October, but. Um, you're talking yeah. about a dongle for your keys? Yeah, yeah. They want to have their own dongle. Not dongle, but you know, yeah, like a tile. 
That's a pretty logical inclusion in their ecosystem, I'd say. What? Yeah. I Especially if so. it costs twice as much as tile. Okay. Exactly. It would aluminum. have to cost twice as much. It's aluminum, right? Like oh, it's yeah. aluminum. aluminum. No, but it, it also charges your AirPods. You know, it's a perfect little device, you know. Okay. Who knows? I, I would buy it if it charges your AirPods. Again, I just made what? that up. Not really? a real rumor. I don't think that's, that's going to happen. That's another false oh, that Kastmeyer was, rumor. So that was one of the other elements that I don't know that we mentioned yet, is that it's going to have wireless charging on the back yes. of the iPhone. Oh, I think yay. that's only for the iPhone 11 Pro is what I the rumors say. I wouldn't be surprised. Say. But like, yeah, you could basically charge your AirPod, which... Again, is is a, is a feature that's already found on Samsung phones. Don't even need to say it anymore. Yeah, I know. It's like already like there. <laughs> Samsung it is. did it. Yeah. Um, one other element that we might hear more about is the Apple Card. So they've been pushing oh, yeah. Apple Card a lot lately. Even if they do like a general summary or hey, this has been going really fantastic. Everybody's been really excited about it. I would probably anticipate some level of Apple Card something. What about and special pricing? Buy an iPhone with your Apple Card, get a discount. Is that on the table? I mean, there's already, higher, oh, yeah. there's already a higher cash back. Yes, for absolutely. I'm talking about a special kind of like, you know uh, what? You know, an Amazon style, like, you know, for our users, you know, we'll give you, if you order via Alexa, you get with this off, this with order via Apple Card, maybe. You oh, get yeah. 5% yeah. for yeah. the newest or, iPhone, yeah. potentially. One other thing that they could probably pretty easily do that the rumor mill wouldn't know about because this, it, it wouldn't, it's not hardware, so it's a little bit harder to sniff out. Is you remember when they added Uber in as yes. an Apple Card feature? Yeah. They could potentially announce somebody else to say, like, hey, this is going to sweeten the deal as yeah. far as like an additional uh, discount feature for Apple Card. Definitely. So look out for that. Again, just speculation. I don't know. If I'd that's be actually, happen. I mean, as an Apple Card user, I don't use it that often, but. Um, I would love to see more of these partners like an Uber giving like three or four percent cash back. I thought the Uber thing was very smart. Oh, Before yeah. then, it was kind of like you're you're literally only offering this three percent cash back within the Apple ecosystem. And to me, I was just kind of like, okay. I mean, that's, what that's I've not done is good. like I subscribe to iCloud Storage, and so like I just linked my car to that, mm -hmm. and so like I'm getting three percent back on that. And yeah, and like because of the Uber thing, now like I, I've been mostly a Lyft customer, but maybe I'll switch back to Uber for that three mm. percent discount. All right. There you All go. right. To close things out, uh, we know that Disney Plus is coming to Roku, but not on the docket for Fire at all yet. Uh, do you think Disney Plus will start to partner with smart TV manufacturers to get their app on it, such as more Roku and finally coming to Fire TV? Yes. Absolutely. I'd be yeah. really, really surprised if Disney Plus launched without Fire TV. Yep. Um, and if it did, then it'll be like, you know, maybe a month or two later in time for the holidays. But yeah, I mean, Fire TV is a huge platform. It would be, you know, very short sighted of them not to work it out before they launch. And I think Joan said this and that like the presentation was really about like the partners they had signed yeah. up at this point. They're talking right now. Hasn't launched yet. Doesn't launch until November. So there's still a lot of time for them to get the deal done. So it does is available at launch. Yep. Okay, we are out of time, way over time to be honest, but what a great week. Uh, thanks, everybody. Just as a note, uh, we will be back next week, but on Tuesday, since we are covering the Apple event here at CNET, we will not be having a daily charge show. We're going to take a brief hiatus, come back the day following, do the big wrap-up, go over all the disappointments, and then, uh, yeah, we'll see you then. But until then, have a fantastic weekend. We'll see you Monday. And Roger? Yeah, and just a note, uh, I'm going to be gone for, uh, I guess, the next month or so. Nobody um, cares. As hinted, I'm having a second kid, so I'm just going to be... Yay. Oh, wait, yeah, I do care. Yay. Crap, now I'm a Yay. realtor. Second kid. All right. <laughs> Halfway All right. to four. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe to keep the conversation going. We'll do our best to follow up after the show. We're live every weekday morning here on YouTube, Periscope, and CNET.com. Plus, our audio podcast is on pretty much every platform available. So for The Daily Charge, I'm Roger Chang. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm David Katzmeyer. Thanks for joining us.